Well, all right, fam. Glad you can join me. Um, we're going to work on some uppercut drills. That's the main emphasis. And uh, maybe with some other punches and some movement and some kicks. But the whole point here is um, drills that are involving uppercuts. And um, they're basic, maybe some intermediate stuff, but mostly basic. Uh, good foundation so that you can include it in, in uh, mixing matching with your other drills and stuff. So you should already be warmed up. Here you just see me doing a little extra loosening up and some crazy uppercut stuff. Um, all right, so uh, the kicks that we're gonna, I, I like, I usually do like a front kick for a very basic, but I think we'll focus on some roundhouse kicks here. And um, um, you've, you've, hopefully you've gone through some of the bobbing and weaving, you know, the dips and all that stuff. So you get a really good feel of that. But if you don't, that's okay. Um, we're not going to entirely do the weaving and stuff, but we will be d working on our position. We will, we will be working on our rotations. And um, so first thing I'm showing you here is um, this is a, a key point to um, these drills today. Um, we want to have coordination. We want to have a flow. With, with the drills. So what I'm showing you and, and is what I talked about a bunch of other times is um, following the flow and the, and the momentum of your body and riding along with that or, or, or attaching something along with that, whether that's another punch or a riding a kick. So here, what we're doing is right after the uppercut, you can feel your whole body th moving forward with that uppercut. or uh, And um, so, so what we're doing is we're attaching the roundhouse kick with that. All right. Um, important thing I'm mentioning also is the breathing. So in a very basic one, and uh, for a lot of beginners or basic, uh, you kind of are, are, are uniquely or individually breathing for each one, like ho, ho, ho. And then as you gain more control and you practice a little bit more, you're sort of breathing through your combinations. So it's ho, and you might have thrown three or four through the combinations and stuff. So practice those and stuff because sometimes dedicating uh, one breath or something per one move can can create a certain type of flow for you or an extra energy. And, and a lot of times breathing through a series of moves helps you stay in control and gives you a type of flow that way as well. Um, play around with it and you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, so what I'm showing you here, what we're going to get at here is um, feel, feel the symmetry or feel the relationship and the balance between the, the, um, the, the limb that you're striking with. Like, so here, in this case, it's our jab. And then see what your other side is doing. And you see how it naturally kind of chambers. It creates a chamber. Okay, so then that's where you're going to ride the uppercut through that. I want you to... <clears throat> Excuse me. I want you to feel those so, uh, leverages and angles that naturally happen with your body. Um, it can be extreme. You could you could combine the natural motion that your body does with intentionally also moving it back even more, or you can allow that to be the only motion that happens on a chamber and keep it very subtle and stuff. That's up to you, and you can play and play with it and stuff. The way to play with it is you sometimes. The, the worst case scenario is to just completely gear back in an obvious, an obvious move right in front of your opponent and they say, oh wow, I, I imagine something really big is coming. Let me get out of the way or let me prepare for that. So you want to mask those things, especially um, uh, when you're trying to throw a little bit more of a power shot or something dedicated that might make you a little bit more vulnerable. Um, uh, Uppercuts are generally, uh, for, is, a, is a wise thing to say, a, a close range punch, like in fighting and stuff, but your opponent is never ra is rarely standing still and they're going to move and try and get out of the way and it's just a dynamic um, interaction, right? So I want you to get used to being able to extend the uppercut, whether you're doing it intentionally or you're, you're throwing the punch. The uppercut's kind of easy to extend a little bit more and, and it's kind of easy to adjust the angle uh, uh, coming coming out a bit and you'll you'll see that and stuff so but you need to get comfortable with that because a longer distance extended uppercut is is a, a lot more difficult to throw and it feels a lot more difficult and also creates a lot of vulnerability so keep in mind you know keep yourself guarded um, with your non-punching hand and uh,
Uh, so let's start with our drills here and, and stuff. So what, what, what I want you to work with is you're throwing out the jab, the lead, okay, your jab, and you're following up with uh, your rear uppercut, okay, and then riding a roundhouse kick with that rear uppercut. The roundhouse kick is coming down into the new stance, and that allows you to keep changing stances and work with the wonderful drill. Um, let's see. Uh, Keep the kick low if you have to, go slow, practice with your heights, um, practice with your uppercut uh, angles also. You see I'm showing you um, high ones, low ones, keeping it close to your body for leverage and to add force. All right, um, yeah, so, you know, I'll mention a whole bunch of things, some pointers and stuff. And keep in mind that you can replace the roundhouse kick, keep all of these drills and replace them with another kick, front kick, side kick, things like that. So, um, also play with your stances. So on, on other drills, uh, instead of bringing the, the kicking foot down into the new stance, uh, bring it back or bring it into, let it drop to the new stance, then bring it back. So practice those things. Um, okay. Practice your phrasing, and that's what I'm showing over here. And the phrasing is, is uh, the timing, uh, mixing and matching the timing, and that does certainly can go hand in hand with your breathing as well. So, um, like, so here I'm showing you one, two, and then sneak the third, boom, sneak the third one in. So that would be the, the kick and stuff, and throwing off your timing. Um, why is it good to play with that? Because later on, you'll be adding and, and, and doing some things with that timing as well, and um, which are much more realistic. So I don't want you to, to sit here and practice forever just combinations. And I don't want you to be a robot to say, well, when I throw a four-strike combination, the four strikes must happen. It's like a video game. Once you once you pull the trigger on it, the four have to happen. No, that's not the case. You should be able to stop in the middle or, or at least between each strike if you have to and you should also consider that something your opponent is doing things while you're striking too so don't be a robot and don't only practice that you're going to do three or four combinations all the time and one way to do that which is a great advice I give you is to mess with your phrasing unless of course another great way is to get in there and spar with people and stuff but that you, you might not be going to that level you might be doing this for the dynamic fun and exercise part and also a great way to work self-defense so um, my advice and I do this plenty of times just to stay fresh okay break up break up your combinations and stuff imagine um, your opponent broke up your combinations So, yeah, we're, we're just getting started here. So we're going to have a nice, nice little one. And what I'm showing you here is a great little maneuver. It's a great fake. And one of the best ways to throw fakes is to actually kind of, what, the fake is actually a move or at least dedicated rather than a little bit of a subtle one. And there's no right or wrong. There's a whole bunch. But here we're doing the knee. And we're going to lift up the knee as if you're acting like you're going to throw a kick or you're chambering, okay, or it actually is a knee strike, and obviously, or as you can imagine, you could, you know, your fake could turn into a knee strike if it just happens to work. If your opponent takes the bait too much, or in a great way, they might try to jam your kick, in which case they would be running into your knee, so get ready to follow up that fake with maybe just continuing it a little bit more in that opportunity.
Well, okay, I adjusted the camera as you're probably used to that. Um, not adjust, but uh, reset so that I, I get uh, some more time. And um, let's uh, continue to get to some work. I may, I may repeat myself and mention some things, but that's okay because um, imagine we're together. At any time that you're training, um, the crazy thing, and this is true, and I've said this over the course of my life to many of friends, um, chances are I'm training also. Sooner or later, you will be training and you will be exercising and, and practicing at the same time that I am. All right, so we're going to focus on movement here. And every time you see our rotations uh, and changing of angles, I want you to, to imagine that you could also put in your dips and slips in, uh, as well, okay? Um, one common defense uh, people use to guard against a kick that's coming to them is to use that leg check. They use the leg check, and we call it like a leg check or whatever. It's just some form of, of um, deflecting, some form of getting their leg up and uh, meeting your leg, and preferably get, they get to choose the spot rather than you choosing the landing spot. So they're going to hit you a bit with um, uh, their shin or a harder part rather than allow you to get a clean flow to one of their more vulnerable parts, maybe like to the side of the leg at any point is vulnerable, like and then toward the calf, toward the knee or the inner thigh or something like that. So they're going to check that by lifting up their leg and stuff like that, but there's pros and cons to that. Um, by doing that, they, they sort of limit themselves in, in the movement and stuff. So uh, uh, one great way is you can play with that. So you can throw low and keep them, get them to, to um, dedicate themselves and then strike in some other spot. And the same concept, and the same concept works for um, punching and striking to, on the head as well. What we're doing is, you see, to the, to the face, to the face, and then one low one, okay? So you, you work, and uh, you work your, your um, a, a technique, you work your objective uh, of, of landing in a certain spot. Sometimes it's not so simple as to say, I want to punch to the face, so I'm just going to punch to the face. I want to punch to the lower body, I'm just going to punch to the lower body. It doesn't always work out that way. So sometimes you have to earn that, or you have to develop that. And one classic way of developing it is, let's say, I want to get in the body shot. So I go high, high, couple of shots high, and get your guard up, and then I try to sneak one in low. It's a very basic one, and, and then you can mix and match that, and it gets more, right? So you're visualizing the whole, you're visualizing the process, right? So you throw in the roundhouse kick, and your opponent's going to guard it, clinching some form of the leg up, um, very common shell type of guard, and um, which will work very well against the roundhouse kick, right? So then you're going to follow with the jab, also to keep them there, just a little bit more dedication to keep them there and stuff, and then see if you get that little opening to slip in the uppercut to come in. Um, this works well if you were even going high as well, because the uppercut's going to sneak in through the center, through that center line it can. And then you can go to the gut or you can ride it back up to the chin if you want. Um, keeping with that idea, those same, you, you can achieve those same concepts uh, or, or help um, you know, enforce them uh, or assist them by playing with your angles as well and stuff. So if you want to slip in a punch or something, you could also play with your angles and a great way to play with the angles is to combine this all so you strike with let's say the jab up top and you get your opponent um, to defend and react to that while you change angle and then strike low or just the changing of the angle could cause them and, and you add on fakes and yeah let's see right let's see where it goes with our drills and stuff because that's the whole point of what we're going to do here so i want you to imagine that center line Right? And, and you could reverse all of these things and stuff. Uh, hooks and stuff like that uh, tend, to, tend to be a little bit more complicated in their angles and stuff, so they could also get better dedication out of your opponent when guarding them, as opposed to a straight wear or throwing a punch right into your opponent's guard, which is also a technique as well and stuff. And don't be biased and, and think of all concepts and stuff. There are also techniques where you, you, somebody will punch you in the arms and dead in your arms 
and stuff. So you may think that, you know, why is he just punching into that person's guard and stuff? But, uh, you know, some people have uh, thrown that throwing that roundhouse kick and then fortifying that with some kind of punch or strike to the head as well, okay, and then slipping the, the, the lower one while also changing position. So, you know, you, you're creating some really good stuff. So here we're, we're mixing in a little bit of advancing, right? And then here's a version where it's not advancing and then we're going to play with mixing and matching when to advance, on which move do you advance with and you can advance on all of them. You can advance, then throw the kick, advance after the kick, and, and then uh, punch, and then advance with that. Same thing, but the uh, same concept, right? Not only do we mix and match with the advancing, that type of concept, but mix and match when we do the rotating. Um, you can rotate entirely first before throwing any strike, and we can rotate in between every strike and we can rotate you know during and in between some and not others and um, once you get comfortable rotating go back and forth in your rotations and stuff um, we're going to also remember footwork so this is a great opportunity when you're doing your rotations um, some of them can be like a little skip um, some of them can be one one leap step and of course you can do a whole bunch of smaller steps and stuff um, don't try to cross your feet up too much so that you become really off balance or have a large period of time in a poor stance but don't freak out uh, that you have to always have the most proper stances and stuff like that uh, you know you, you work on that fundamental and you mix and match that so our drill here um, we're doing, we're doing, we have like two striking ones. So you start at that 90 degree. We start at that straight, like the 180 facing forward or wherever, right? And then we're going to rotate into a 90. And of course, you can play with those and create 45s. And you can create multiple angles from the starting point. And you could also do these drills and while coming back also off of it. And like I mentioned that other times with the, with the bobbing and weaving, um, uh, also practice um, some defensive stuff on your way back to your starting point again. This way you don't get into the habit of um, throwing your three combo, four combo thing and then it's all done and stuff. And this will, and that will be a great way to um, segue into a more realistic fighting uh, situation where um, after your combo is done, every, you don't just go back like in a classroom setting and wait for the teacher to call out your next set, you know. You may have to keep comboing or you may just, you know, have to do something in between whatever your comfort zone is and stuff. So the best way to do that is at any time we finish a drill that I show you here, attach on some other things to it. Even if it's just a few more defensive stuff, all right? Even if it's also... Um, practice proper footwork on your way back okay so you see here how I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about that and stuff because uh, because of my experience and things like that it's very uh, either using either leg is very fluid for me and stuff so sometimes like like for a lot of situations when you're doing it for a long time okay what might be a bad habit is not that bad of a habit I and mean, where you've gotten good at it and stuff and so you have to work extra hard at remembering some basic stuff again, too, and making sure that you're keeping that kind of fresh as well, which is not to cross the legs over too much. And if you're following, you can see that. So here's our, you noticing our drill. So we're keeping consistent. It's uh, that lead jab, okay, following up with the uh, rear uppercut. And we're not throwing the kicks yet because I want we we going a little bit back and um, just focusing on that technique, getting it right, and getting the foot foot positions right and getting the angles right. Okay. It's up to you, but this is very valuable. And um, whatever drills that you do, um, uh, I want you to actually play with the angles. I want you to change angles within them. So that's another th easy thing, or uh, or easy addition that you could add to to your practice and stuff
So whatever you do, even if we're just throwing front kicks, right? Um, whatever you're facing, or just imagine that, imagine your practice always has the four cardinal directions. It doesn't mean that you have to actually incorporate them in your technique of movement right there, but whatever you're practicing, just, just rotate. So after you, let's, let's say you do a set of five or ten front kicks, okay, turn. It doesn't have to be part of the process, okay, just turn and face a new direction and do your next set of ten. And then slowly do include it as part of your process so that you are turning kind of during your, your drills. It's part of the drill. Now, of course, just to keep in mind, um, uh, we'll see here we're doing the instant. We're doing the instant roundhouse kick. And you could incorporate, your, you could either do instants or the rear, or do both of them. So we have the center line, we're throwing the um, instant, we're doing our regular base combo, which is the lead, jab, and then the uppercut, okay? And then we're throwing uh, another instant. So we're doing the instant, then we're doing our lead, uppercut, move to a new position, instant, lead, uppercut, move back to the original, instant kick, lead, uppercut, and then rotate to the other side, okay, instant, your lead uppercut, one two. Okay, instant roundhouse kick, one two. Pretty simple, right? Pretty cool. Um, just practice your different footworks, and um, uh, so not only the stepping, you could change. You could change your angles um, by also rotating one foot and stuff. And I think you'll you'll see me try one of those and stuff. So you play with those and stuff, and. Um, here we're getting our practice in, so we're kind of making it really nice and, and um, exaggerated in our rotation. But um, you could also stand in place, sort of, and just rotate kind of much more in place. But here you, you see how it's, instead of a step, you see we can also involve the shuffle. So if you, if I wanted to stay in place, for example, I could just keep that lead foot planted and just and and, and allow it to just rotate in place as the back leg, the rear leg, does the sliding around behind you so that it rotates you. And you mix and match with those, those as well. Um, what are some of the advantages to rotating by the by the slide type of you know um, scuffle type of thing? Uh, it's really quick. It's a really quick one, a quicker, a quicker type of adjustment and stuff. Um, it doesn't require you to lift up your leg as much. Every time you lift your leg off the ground is a vulnerable moment, or when you're on one foot. Oh uh, yeah. So what was that mistake? If you caught it, the mistake is I think I was supposed to do the um, instant kick first, then the punches. And so when I went back to the starting position, I went back to the punches. Small thing, not a big thing or whatever, but I just knew it and thought it was cool to catch it. Um, look at a little bit more of the bobbing, a little bit more of the of the of the um, fluidness hop. Okay, so um, practice both of those. This is a, that's a great reminder that I just um, caught there, and I was intentionally doing that there. But the the thing is, practice ones where you're very steadfast, um, not not heavily anchored, but steadfast and planted really well, and not doing heaps of gyrating and heaps of. And then practice other ones. A great way to do it is a little bit more like a Muhammad Ali. 
in the sense of you know your your bobbing and your weaving or your just your fluidness and your your shuffle and, and things like that and add a little bit of that shuffle and hop to your step as well why do we do that because um, it, it kind of it helps you practice not being so um, lead foot lead footed and um, lead weight and planted and stuff and so it helps you uh, move and spring into action why is it good to be able to spring into action because the more heavy and planted you are um, just to tend that you tend to be slower and um, it tends to take a little a lot more energy and stuff to actually get your kick out of that uh, you know heavily planted position of course heavily planted positions allow you a chance to gear and load up and stuff and sure so you might throw like a super heavy shot but wouldn't it be amazing if you could throw a super heavy shot from a light-footed position right wouldn't that be sneaky and wouldn't it be great if from a very heavy planted position you can throw a really quick flicking kick so I think um, that's something to uh, definitely aim for and to incorporate in your abilities the great thing about all of this is uh, you get to practice with me um, going through all of these uh, kicks and techniques and it's also all going into self-defense and um, and uh, working on the self in such a physical way like this it's such a traditional masterful relationship um, uh, I don't know you call me crazy but like I would I tend to like this a little bit more than if I was just strictly targeting uh, exercises just targeting my abs because I wanted a six-pack um, that's fine to each his own and stuff like that but I don't know I got a lot more excited with you know doing things for striking and stuff that, that's my background so I was a lot more excited about that than uh, what my abs looked like and stuff the only concern I ever had about any of my muscles was just in in relation to their ability to perform something but never really for appearance well all right so hopefully that gave you a whole bunch of uh, stuff to add and mix and match. And it shouldn't be too much different from some of our other fight training we've done together. But the whole point was we were incorporating the uppercut. And we started with a very great basic one, which is the lead and then the uppercut. And we threw in a kick that was um, riding on the momentum of our body and stuff. And we practiced the angles and playing the different angles and moving with that as well. So... Um, I'll see you in the next training session. Uh, love you guys very much.